Righteousness in verse 20 does not refer to the objective righteousness, which is the Christ we receive when we believe in Him, that we may be justified before God. It refers to the subjective righteousness, which is the indwelling Christ lived out of us as our righteousness, that we may live in the reality of the kingdom today and enter into its manifestation in the future. This subjective righteousness is not obtained merely by fulfilling the old law, but by completing the old law through the fulfillment of the new law of the kingdom of the heavens. The law given by the new king here in this section of the word, this righteousness of the kingdom people according to the new law of the kingdom surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees according to the old law. It is impossible for our natural life to gain this surpassing righteousness. It can be produced only by a higher life, the resurrection life of Christ. The righteous, this righteousness, which is likened to the wedding garment, qualifies us to participate in the wedding of the Lamb and inherit the kingdom of the heavens in its manifestation, that is to enter into the kingdom of the heavens in the future. To enter into the kingdom of God requires regeneration as a new beginning of our life. But to enter into the kingdom of the heavens demands surpassing righteousness in our living after regeneration. To enter into the kingdom of the heavens means to live in its reality today and to participate in its manifestation in the future. Regarding murder, the old law not to murder. Verse 21 says, You have heard that it was said to the ancients, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to the judgment. The old law was the command not to murder. What you have heard in verses 21, 27, 33, 38, and 43 is the law of the old dispensation. Whereas what I say to you in verses 22, 28, 32, 34, 39, and 44 is the new law of the kingdom, complementing the law of the old dispensation. The new complementing law, not to be angry with the brother, not to contempt the brother, and not to condemn the brother. In verse 22, the king said, But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to the judgment, and whoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be liable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever shall say Moray shall be liable to the Gehenna of fire. The law of the old dispensation deals with the acts of murder, but the new law of the kingdom deals with anger, the motive of murder. Hence, the demand of the new law of the kingdom is deeper than the requirement of the law of the old dispensation. The word brother in verse 22 proves that the king's word here is spoken to believers. The most difficult thing for us to do is to control our anger. Some were supposed to be very gentle, but their anger was like a wild horse when they lost their temper. When our anger is released, no one can breathe us or control us. For a number of years, I could not get through this chapter because of the problem of my anger. It is also very difficult for us not to contempt or condemn others. In verse 22, the Lord speaks about saying to our brother Raka or More. The word Raka is an expression of contempt, meaning stupid, good for nothing. More that is fool is a Hebrew expression of condemnation indicating a rebel. This expression is more serious than the expression of contempt Raka. How difficult it is neither to condemn a brother nor to hold him in contempt. Perhaps you cannot go for even a week without condemning or contempting someone. It seems that nearly every day we either contempt or condemn. Husbands and wives contempt and condemn one another. I do not believe there is one exception. Every wife has contempt and condemned her husband, and every husband has done the same to his wife. This is a real problem. When you read this, can you still say that you are the overcomers, the kingdom people? Do not be disappointed. Rather, be encouraged. Remember, we have an overcoming life. Do you not have the king within you? We are the kingdom people, and we have the king within us. The king is the kingly overcoming life. 
do not look at yourself. If you do, you will be fully discouraged. Forget yourself and look at the kingly life within you. It is this life that makes us the kingdom people. Forget your natural life and follow this kingly life. In verse twenty-two, there are three kinds of judgment. The first is the judgment at the gate of the city, which is the district judgment. The second is the judgment by the Sanhedrin, which is the higher judgment. The Sanhedrin is a council composed of the chief priests, the elders, the lawyers, and the scribes. It is the highest court of the Jews. The third is the judgment by God through the Gehenna of fire, which is the highest judgment. These three kinds of judgment were mentioned by the new king using figures of the Jewish background, because all his audience were was Jewish. However, concerning the kingdom people, the believers of the New Testament, all these judgments refer to the judgment of the Lord as at the judgment seat of Christ, as revealed in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse ten, Romans chapter fourteen, verse ten, twelve, First Corinthians chapter four, verse four to five, chapter three, verse thirteen to fifteen, Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty-seven, Revelation chapter twenty-two, verse twelve. And Hebrews chapter ten verse twenty seven thirty. This clearly reveals that the New Testament believers, although forgiven by God for error, are still liable to the Lord's judgment, not for perdition, but for discipline. If they sin against the law of the kingdom as given here, however, when we sin against the new law of the kingdom, if we repent and confess our sins, we shall be forgiven and cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. In verse twenty-two, the new king speaks of the Gehenna of fire. The word Gehenna is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Gehenna, Valley of Hinnom. It was a deep and narrow valley near Jerusalem. The refuse place of the city, where the bodies of criminals and all kinds of filth were cast, it was also called Tophet or Tophet, because of its continual fire. It became the symbol of the place of eternal punishment, the lake of fire. This word is also used in Matthew chapter five, verse twenty nine, thirty; chapter ten, verse twenty eight; chapter eighteen, verse nine. Chapter twenty three was fifteen thirty three, Mark chapter nine was forty three forty five forty seven, Luke chapter twelve was five, and James chapter three was six. James chapter three was six, and the tongue is a fire, the very word of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, as that which contaminates the whole body, and sets on fire the course of life, and is set on fire by Gehenna.